Your Excellency, coming here, I'm minded by a, a quotation attributable to you um, during the coronation of the overlord and king of the Dagon traditional area, in which a permission I'd like to quote. You said that Dagon will today showcase a rich tradition and culture of our people. You added that working together, the eminent chiefs appointed to help resolve the very challenging Dagon chieftaincy dispute, the Andani and the Abudu royal families and the people of Ghana. This major success has been achieved, and we have a new Ghana. Your Excellency, I'd like to draw from this the committee of eminent chiefs, and their, their success is part of the reasons why we are here today. Your Excellency, the transitions obviously started during the time of His Excellency John Edmund um, Kofor, and he moved all the way through to His Excellency John Ivan C. Samuels, may he so rest in peace, and then through to yourself. And I'd like to mention that the support that your government gave to the committee is very commendable. All the way through to His Excellency Nana Adman Your Excellency, Otunfo's role in leading the process uh, up onto a very fruitful settlement is what earned him the title as a pillar of peace presented to him by the Africa Premier Leadership Award on the 29th of December 2019. It must also be stated that his role and his love for peace goes beyond what he did in that one, touching on the settlement of the long protracted key university disputes, um, seeing Ghana through difficult transitions, politically case in point 2012 and 16, and many others. Um, and this was part of what led Otunfo to be invited to the United Nations to deliver a speech on partnership for culture and peace, how traditional authorities would mobilize communities for peace. It's on this background that Your Excellency, the Bank of Ghana, gave approval to Eon 3 Group to mint a beautiful 24 karat gold coin to commemorate the long road and love for peace by the Okemsua Otun for to the second. Your Excellency, in December of last year, we unveiled the gold coin in Kumasi at Mesha. It was a beautiful event. Um, and I'd like to say that for those behind the project, crowd support of institutions, including the KGL Group, Access Bank represented here, Mesia Palace itself, Coronation Insurance, and many others. Now, we have two roadmaps for ensuring that every Ghanaian becomes a part of this heritage and culture. The first phase is the category we are calling leaders in VIP. And with your permission, I'll just run through those who received so far. KGL Group purchased the first gold coin through an auction for a million cities. The second gold coin was received by a person in whose name the gold coin was created, who was it. His, His Excellency the President received the third gold coin. The fourth was received by His Excellency the Vice President. The fifth was presented to the Chief Justice. And yesterday, we were lucky and, and happy to have uh, gone to the home in a way of your very good friend, His Excellency John Adekunifo, who received the sixth gold coin. And I'm super excited to be here leading the team to present to you the seventh gold coin. And I'd like to call on the Executive Chairman, uh, Richard Mendoza for your time. Let me express my appreciation, you know, to have received this coin, not only because of the person who's been honored, but also because of the significance that gold plays in our general economy as, as a country. If I want to start talking about no tomb for I'm sure we'll leave here at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I have a special relationship with him. And um, what most people don't know is I've known him since I was a child. Um, we grew up in Greenway Estates, and our house was directly opposite Namaya Duhine's house. And for those of you who know uh, the king, in his formative years, his uncle sent him to Sejuy also to be groomed by Nana Eduhine in Sejuy also. So he attended Sejuy also secondary school. And so anytime he came on vacations, instead of going to Kumase, to his uncle's palace, he came to Accra to Nana Eduhine's house. And so we played Gota to Gota before, because they were older than us. <laughs> and uh, we were much uh, younger. And then um, afterwards, I mean, we, we lost contact until he came back as, you know, the king of Asante. You know, at that time, I had also just 
started to cut my political teeth, I think I was a deputy minister of communications or something. And so we re-established contact and uh, the rest is, is history. But um, certainly, if anybody was to be celebrated in this country, I mean, uh, you, you couldn't go past Otumpo. Um, he's transcended several governments, you know, from Rolling Stone, he's been a part of consolidating our democracy. And uh, he's been good counsel, you know, at times when there's been crisis. Um, I know when I served as minister, many times that, you know, he and uh, President Rawlings consulted, you know, and he was always available to give guidance. It was the same with President Kofor. He was quite close with President Kofor. There was no time before went to Kumasi that he didn't pass by Malaysia to, to see to see him. It was the same when President Mills was in office. Um, he used to drop by the castle from time to time. And President Mills, to, um, anytime he was in command, he would, would call on him. Um, as for me, he was like an elder brother to me. <laughs> I don't remember more than a couple of weeks passing without us talking about one thing or the other. Um, but it went beyond that, and I, I've said this story once, this was probably the second time I'm saying it. When we had the crisis with the economy in 2013, 2014, uh, Paul would know all these, these things. We had uh, implemented a single spine pay policy from Professor Mills' time. And 2012, 2013 was when the arrears were kicking in. That is after placing everybody on the spine. And so, um, we overshot in terms of revenue. We had been assured that it would be revenue neutral, but it turned out you know, to be quite a burden on the budget. And so we did the CT Forum, uh, in which PB of being of blessed memory, you know, was one of the prime movers together with Kwame Pienim and the others. And after that, they came up with a homegrown uh, fiscal consolidation uh, program. Um, we tried to implement it. But the international investors, I mean, they didn't believe that we had the discipline to be able to do it. And so we tried to convince them, but they, they, they wouldn't budge. And so eventually we realized that, I mean, if we were to get credibility behind the program, then we needed to go uh, to the IMF. They wanted to see us under the schoolmaster before they believed that we could implement the program. Now we started talking to the IMF and they were stalling the program and extending the discussions, negotiations. I mean, after they finish meeting, it's okay. And then they give you another day to meet about a month away. Maybe it was critical to get this program locked in as quickly as possible. And so one day, in one of my frustrations, I was in Kumasi and I went to see him. And then he asked me how things were going. And then I explained to him what was going on, you know. And then I remembered that you know, he had quite some good friends in high places, you know. So I just said, ah, can you intervene in this thing? I know Jim Wolferson is your friend. Can you, you know, get him to speed up these negotiations for a program for us? And um, he readily accepted. And because of that request, he got ready. He called Jim Wolferson. He took a flight. He flew, met him. They went together to Washington. And Jim Wolferson took him to um, at that time, the IMF director was uh, Madame Lagarde, yeah, and they went and saw her. And um, after the meeting, in a short space of time, things changed, and then suddenly we had the extended credit facility, the ECF. <laughs> and that is the program that turned the economy around, you know, because I'm proud that under that program, in 2016, you know, almost for the first time in our history, we did zero central bank financing of the budget. We didn't take one single CD, you know, from the central bank, you know, and then we handed over, you know, to the new administration. So as for Otunfo, I mean, I could say so many things about him. I mean, of course, you've talked about the Dabong thing. He was the prime mover in terms of settling that crisis. And that is because of the historical links that the stool he sits on has with those traditional authorities, Dagong and Ashanti, have had those links historically. The same with Dagong and Gunja, Dagong and Mapusi. Uh, so because of those traditional links, it made it easy for a person like him to be the interlocutor, you know, to be able to restore peace, yeah. So um, we're proud of him. 
and we're happy that this coin has been issued. I believe that um, in most countries, and we should have been doing this long before, um, we commemorate events and people using these coins, and they are store of value. I mean, if you go to South Africa, the Kruger Rand, you know, it's, it's, it's quite famous worldwide. And to think that we have overtaken South African gold production, then this is the last piece of the jigsaw that we need to put in there. You know, be able to market our own gold coins, you know, to the international uh, uh, community. So, um, good initiative, it has our backing, and uh, we thank you very much for the honor that you've done the King. Thank you. Thank you.